In this video, we are tracking Hurricane Elsa as she continues to intensify in the Caribbean. The National Hurricane Center has issued hurricane warnings for Haiti and Jamaica with major flooding expected. And still, the models are showing this thing tracking right up the Gulf into Florida. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we get into the weather forecast today, I do have to show you something back here. Uh, we do have a guest uh, speaker today with us on the weather forecast discussion video. Say hi, Echo. Say hi. He's gonna be sitting right here next to me as I uh, do all of the weather forecasting. And he will likely, uh, you'll probably hear him back there trying to put in uh, some input on you know all of the data that we're going over. But honestly, I'm not gonna give him too much uh, air time because his level of understanding uh, and the terminology that he uses is just way too advanced for YouTube and you wouldn't understand it, okay? Now let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. As you can see, our big frontal boundary that we've been watching over the past couple of days is finally moving out of the United States. Uh, all those big storms we've been seeing in New England, all the way down into Maryland and Virginia, uh, that system is finally moving out of here. And we've just got a little bit of a boundary left here, causing some rain showers in Florida, maybe on the coast of Louisiana there. And then right on the tail end of it here, we do have some convection going on in uh, South Central or Western Texas near Midland and Abilene and Lubbock. Okay, uh, you can see the green box boxes there are indicating that there are some uh, flash flood warnings. Now, this looks pretty scary. It looks pretty red. <laughs> Uh, but this isn't what the radar looks like. This is actually just the uh, infrared satellite. And the reason we're looking at that is so that we can skedaddle over here and actually take a look at Hurricane Elsa. Yeah, that's right. This is what Hurricane Elsa looks like right now. And uh, honestly, it looks a little underwhelming. It looks a little less uh, impressive than it did yesterday. We can't see as much of the, you know, the cyclonic rotation with the low pressure system there. There is deep convection here. You can see, you know, some new storms popping up, but it's really not wrapping around that center of circulation like you would want to see uh, if you were looking for this thing to uh, be increasing in strength. But as you can see, some of those outer bands are currently impacting Puerto Rico, moving into the Dominican Republic and Haiti regions. And we're gonna watch the center of circulation as it goes off to the north and west here and see whether or not it affects Jamaica uh, and Cuba. And where it actually crosses Cuba at in the future is going to greatly determine how uh, you know uh, intense and severe uh, this uh, hurricane is going to be. And we're gonna talk more about that on the weather models right now. All right, here's a look at our trusty H triple R model. Now, right here, we're not looking at Hurricane Elsa. We're going to very quickly go over uh, the potential for some severe weather over here today in Colorado and Nebraska and maybe Kansas. And, and I'll show you here in a second. We do have a little bit of a disturbance. We got a lot of uh, warm, moist air up here in the central plains. And there's going to be a little something, something try to come through here and interact with that. And we might see some big hailers and some isolated, uh, uh, you know, damaging wind events today as these storms move through. You agree, Echo? Yeah, he agrees. Uh, look here. We've got big storms going up, you know, from 6 to 9 p.m. from North Dakota into Central South Dakota, also in Nebraska and Colorado. This is going to be on the front range of Colorado, east of Denver, okay? I wanted to briefly, you know, go over this because the Storm Prediction Center has uh, issued a slight risk of severe weather today for these storms, uh, so I didn't want to just brush over it. We're also going to see some heavy rain and some, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, moisture-rich storms down here in Texas today, so that's just what you got to look forward to tonight. You know, that's around prime fireworks shooting time. If you're in this area over here, Colorado, South Dakota, uh, Western Nebraska, you're your plans may be uh, disrupted this evening as uh, we see some of these storms move in, okay? All right, now we're looking at the official data from the National Hurricane Center concerning Hurricane Elsa. And I think we might have a comment from Echo. Echo, right, what's wrong down there, buddy? Uh, Okay, so Echo has quit the uh, <laughs> Ryan Hall, y'all, weather studio. I'm sure he'll be back, though. Back to uh, the National Hurricane Center and the official data here, the latest update on Hurricane Elsa. Uh, we do have uh, right here at, at 8 a.m. today, we saw this is where the storm is right now. You can see all these red areas. That's where the hurricane warnings currently are. Once again, Jamaica and southern portions of the Dominican Republic, all under hurricane warnings as the National Hurricane Center is expecting this to continue to be a hurricane uh, tonight at 2 a.m., 2 a.m. Sunday, right Right there as it's in between Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba. Now, we still have a pretty big cone of uncertainty here, uh, but it does look like the overall track of this storm has shifted to the north a little bit. So that means it's a best case scenario for everybody, right? Uh, especially the further north you are, and especially if you're in Florida, because what this means is the National Hurricane Center is uh, suggesting that this is gonna go right across Cuba, all the way across Cuba. Like pretty much it's gonna take the path of most resistance at this point and encounter a lot of mountainous regions and likely, uh, you know, uh, 
deform a lot uh, as it goes over that landmass, and then we won't have to worry about a, a, a hurricane hitting Florida if that was to happen, okay? This will definitely weaken down into a tropical storm, and then, you know, the impacts on the western side of Florida would be dramatically uh, less than what we were looking at if we were to see a Category 2 hurricane hit, like some of the models were uh, suggesting yesterday. Here's those tropical storm force wind probabilities. You can see we've got, you know, pretty much 100% all the way up into Haiti. Now, right here, uh, where it's going to make landfall in Cuba, we're up to 70 to 80% chance of those tropical storm force winds moving through. And then all the way up into the Tampa region, north of Clearwater near Cedar Key, we are approaching 30 to 40% chance of tropical storm force winds all the way up there in Florida. And look at this, we're, we're seeing the, you know, the low end chances coming all the way up into the Chesapeake Bay and the outer banks of North Carolina there. So we are expecting this storm, uh, once it goes across Florida, to maintain its strength as possibly a tropical storm all the way up until it gets, you know, into Virginia and maybe even Maryland. So that's going to be really interesting to watch as we go forward. It's going to bring a lot of rain to the Northeast. And we're going to talk more about that here today when we look at the weather models, uh, which is something we need to do right now. All right, now we're going to look at the composite reflectivity model once again, and we're going to see what this thing's doing. Remember, yesterday, this model took this uh, south of the Dominican Republic in Haiti, and it also took it south of Cuba for the most part until it made landfall right there in central Cuba. Uh, but today, I believe it's going to show something a little different because the National Hurricane Center, you know, looks at these models and they, they adjust their forecast based on this. So their eastern shift probably is going to result in an eastern shift on this model as well. Look at this. We still see a pretty good, uh, you know, indication of circulation. Uh, still looks like a hurricane to me. Uh, at this point here on the HMON model, 5 p.m. today as it approaches southern Haiti here. But as you can tell, this is quite a bit further north than what we were looking at yesterday. I think the center of circulation was way down here. You know, that's a slight track difference, but it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to determining where landfall is going to occur. And it looks to me like it's going to intensify once again right before it gets to Cuba around 8 a.m. on Sunday, July 4th, and make landfall as likely a Category 1 uh, hurricane there uh, in southern Cuba. And then look at this. It's going to track right across the land mass. It's not going to come out back out to sea. Uh, the center of circulation is going to be landlocked and the entire time it's going to go through deformation and you know all of that cyclonic rotation and energy that it gathered as it was going through the Caribbean Sea uh, will be dissipated. Once again, that's good news for Florida because here comes the storm uh, back into the Gulf of Mexico and it's, it is going to try to intensify once again because the waters out here are warm. The upper air dynamics are incredibly favorable for the, you know, uh, the intensification of cyclonic uh, storm systems out here, but it's just not going to have enough time as this tracks up and according to this model makes landfall somewhere in southwestern Florida uh, near Naples and Fort Myers okay so you know if that was to be the case this would definitely be a tropical storm and it probably wouldn't be very impactful for the people of Florida uh, except for maybe on the southeastern quadrant you can see that line of storms there that would probably be uh, tornadic in nature uh, and be pretty you know intense but you know the, the traditional uh, tropical storm around the center of the circulation wouldn't be that bad here if this was to be how this actually played out now let's keep pushing this forward and the interesting thing here is look at this as it goes across florida and gets back on the atlantic side okay and it starts the majority of that storm is over warm waters and it's cooking up and it's starting to re you know intensify you can see uh once again it looks like it is actually forming back up into a very uh, picturesque looking you know cyclone storm here as it approaches savannah georgia You've got these feeder bands that come from florida all the way up into like near the myrtle beach region that's a big storm and we will probably see tropical storm force winds if this was to happen all the way up the Georgia and South Carolina coasts and we can continue to watch this thing as it <laughs> goes all the way up into uh, once again North Carolina and at this point you know it still may be a tropical depression as it gets all the way up into the Delmarva Peninsula and eventually up into Jersey and Long Island all right back to the GFS now and we're going to track this thing out long term now the GFS has been incredibly consistent showing a strong storm uh, hitting the western portions of Florida but once again I think because because the National Hurricane Center changed their forecast, I actually haven't looked at this yet. I do believe uh, that this is probably going to show a weaker storm now at this point too. So let's let's push it forward. There's our storm. It's harder to see now, but there it is making landfall in Cuba, going across Cuba once again. I, I've talked about this for days. If this was the path that it was going to take, uh, this you know obviously it's going to result in a, a weaker storm because you know hurricanes need to be over water before they can intensify. Center of circulation there is over Cuba. It does get back into the Gulf of Mexico here 
a little bit, goes across the Keys, and the GFS is trying to keep it in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast there, but it does make landfall there uh, on the peninsula of Florida, goes across Florida, and then rapidly deforms as it goes all the way up the coast. So that is such a drastic difference uh, from what we saw yesterday. Let's look at the yesterday's model once again. This is how much a slight path difference matters. Look at this. Yesterday's model took this just north of Jamaica, kept it clear and away from Cuba, and allowed some forward momentum and some extra, you know, um, you know, intensification to happen down here in the Caribbean. And then it crossed over Cuba at the thinnest part, and then just really started to intensify as it entered the Gulf of Mexico, and then you know made landfall right there north of Cedar Key, uh, and then it went up into Georgia and South Carolina. Now, you know, that right there shows a pretty significant storm, and once again, possibly a Category Two hurricane making landfall there but today's model shows I don't even know what that shows <laughs> It's also important to look at the Euro now. We're close enough to the storm to where we can actually look at what's going to happen with it according to the ECMWF deterministic model. And it is also very unimpressive with the storm. Okay. Now we can watch this thing in the East Coast, even though it's going to, you know, be slightly less intense, at least we, what we think right now. It looks like it's not going to be as intense as what we thought it was going to be yesterday. It's still going to make landfall there in Florida and then it's still going to trek up the East Coast and bring some really heavy rain to Georgia and South Carolina and eventually to North Carolina. And then once again, eventually, down here in the Delmarva Peninsula, possibly in Delaware and South Jersey as well, uh, as a cold front moves through and really tries to, you know, kick it out of here before it gets into the, the northern areas of New England and the northeastern portions of, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So no matter what, though, this uh, tropical cyclone moving in and kind of opening the gates uh, for all of this moisture to come into the United States is going to set the stage for a very wet period of time here on the eastern part of the United States. You can see here from Iowa to uh, uh, Michigan all the way down into Arkansas and of course the Gulf states and uh, all the way up into the Northeast upstate New York uh, you know over the next week or two we are going to see an incredible amount of rain as uh, the Gulf of Mexico moisture stream has just been opened up and uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, disturbances move through from the north and west that will pr probably cause uh, severe weather up here as well. Now even though most of the models today are showing uh, Hurricane Elsa uh, rapidly de-intensifying as it approaches the United States it's still something that we should watch closely closely. I don't want you to let your guard down. Uh, now, especially, I know we have some people that live in Jamaica uh, and, and places like that that watch these videos too. You guys don't need to let your guard down either, okay? This thing still has time to change and it still has time to rapidly intensify. Remember yesterday, uh, you know, before the uh, the storm was upgraded to a hurricane, a lot of people, even in the weather community, meteorologists, people that worked at the National Hurricane Center, believed that this would never become a hurricane and only maintain its tropical storm strength as it approached Cuba. Uh, but yesterday we got the update that it's actually a category Category one hurricane. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to watch this thing closely as it looks like it's starting to intensify again. You can see that little last little blow up there of convection. If that actually wraps around the center of circulation there and we get a little bit more forward momentum, momentum here in the Caribbean Sea, uh, I do believe that we're going to get that last push to maybe uh, get it back up into the category one cycle, maybe closer to the category two cycle. And then, you know, whenever those periods of rapid intensification happen with these storms, we also have to look at track shifts. Okay, so you know the the center of circulation it, it's able to wobble back and forth a little bit depending on how much convection is forming and uprooting around the uh, the actual circulation. So if we do get a big old area of convection, a deep, rich convection area uh, wrapping around the center of circulation, that could dive it a little bit further south, and then that'll change the whole story of everything that we're talking here today. Uh, and, and it's little intricacies like that that models can't pick up on until after they happen. So models aren't the end all be all um, way that we forecast the weather. I still believe that people of Florida, especially on the western side, uh, need to be preparing. Now, once again, it's not the end of the world. It's not going to be crazy or anything, uh, but you need to be preparing for heavy rainfall, uh, you know, more than you've seen in a while, uh, and maybe some tropical storm force winds or low end hurricane force winds, whatever that means for you. Um, you know, make those uh, preparations there anywhere from Naples all the way up into the Panama City Beach area. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed the little cameo from Echo. <laughs> we'll have him back on here sooner than later. I promise you that. And uh, thanks to everybody who's been sending stuff uh, to Echo through our PO box. By the way, we have a PO box if you if you ever want to send anything. I've been opening those live on our members only live streams. Uh, but th just thank you guys. Thank you for all the support. Like the video, uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.